A link to the pattern can be found in the description below and you can print it to whichever size you wish using the scaling feature of your program. But once you've printed it out, it will need taping together and then cutting out. Now I've put both versions on the same pattern, so you can either print two copies and cut them out separately, or you can simply cut around the outermost edge and then make use of folding and slits to enable you to make it smaller to whichever size you wish to cut out at that time. Fold your fabric over or use two pieces on top of each other and then lay the pattern over top. I used chalk to mark around the outside before pinning the fabric together and then cutting it out. Once cut out, I repositioned my fabric and folded the pattern then to fit the ladies size and repeated the process. Initially, I was going to use the reddish fabric for the gents and this blue one for the ladies. But after looking at them side by side, I figured for the sake of continuity, I would simply use the red fabric and just embellish the ladies boots slightly differently to that of the gents. I decided to use this shiny red fabric as the lining. And I also decided that because the heels would be difficult to turn out and the toe as well, to some extent, once you have the batting layer and everything in place, that it would probably make more sense to simply cut out a more or less cylindrical insert kind of following the line of my finger so that nothing would get stuck uh, in the heel or the toe and also so that it wouldn't be too difficult to turn a, to, to flip out uh, when completed. The outer layer was pinned to the liner and I roughly cut out the shape of the liner from both boots before doing a final more precise cut out. And here they are cut out and more or less ready to sew. Simply follow the outside edge with the sewing machine or by hand, however you're going to do it. Just do not cut along the top. Do not sew along the top, sorry. It's very important to leave the top open so that you can flip it right side out. Off camera, I went ahead and cut the layer of batting that was going to be attached to the outside fabric. Rather than doing everything together, I figured I would sew the lining separately and then sew the batting attached to the boot, uh, turning it out when completed, and then piece the one into the other. At the sewing machine, I proceeded to stitch the seam for the liner. I do not have a back stitch option on this 1934 sewing machine, so I simply lifted the presser foot and sort of backtracked on my own. And then notches were cut out around the outside curves so that they could turn more easily. I trimmed the excess seam allowance and also added some slots or slits I should say along the inside curves 
to again enable everything to turn out more easily without any wrinkles and lay as flat as possible. The batting was cut and attached by pins to the outer fabric. There are two layers of batting and two layers of fabric which when turned around will form a layer of fabric and batting on each side and the line to stitch is pretty much all around the outside except for a section at the very top where you need to make sure there's a gap to flip it out through. So here goes the stitching again of two layers of fabric to two layers of batting. The process does slow down at the corners and I did try to make sure that the batting wasn't being pushed out along the edge so I did pause every so often to make sure that the batting was was well well tucked in underneath of the stitch line. And on to the other boot. So here is everything stitched together. And I simply separated the two outer layers and turned the whole thing right side out. And yes, the heels do take a little bit more time just to ensure that those corners are as acute as possible. So then with both boots turned right side out, I proceeded to flip the layers of the stocking and I positioned the outer layer and the batting inside of the lining and then pinned everything together, starting at the side seam lines to ensure that they were completely aligned and then stretching and pinning along the front and back edges so that everything would be as even as possible. Before sewing everything together it is important to note that due to the fact that everything will have to be turned and flipped through once again it's important to leave a gap so it doesn't really matter where you put it just make sure that you give yourself enough space that you can effectively pull the outer layers from inside through whatever hole you can leave for yourself. Clearly there was some bulk batting that had collected at the top so I just trimmed that down before stitching everything together. And this was quite a slow process to ensure that I was sewing through everything that I needed to sew through. But it got done and this is showing the removal of the outer layers from inside of the stocking.
and then the remaining fabric is simply pushed down inside. I do apologize that some parts of this video were slightly off frame. I was obviously paying more attention to what I was doing than the, the screen itself. So that's it. The lining has been attached to the outer layers and all that's left to do is to hand stitch the remaining gap together. Now for boot number two. These curvy pointy bits on the side were the hardest to turn out. So I did make use of a pin after I'd pushed it through as far as I could, I used the pin to kind of grab the fabric on the very tip and just tease it into shape so that it would be, again, as, as acute of a point as possible. I decided to use a piece of paper to trace out the line for the shape of the contrasting fabric. I used my pencil to follow the line, but do bear in mind that that is the outside edge. So you need to make sure that the fold over is going to be accounted for when you cut out the fabric. So you might want to leave half inch or so around the outside when you do cut it out. Also bear in mind that I have noted using the circle and diamond motif where the edges go for the ladies and gents boots. So you will have to have two separate pieces in order to ensure that it fits correctly. This is just showing how after cutting out the contrasting fabric, I outlined it with some chalk and then folded and used my iron to crease that line. So I ended up with a panel that was perfectly shaped to fit the allowed space on the pattern. I teased the fabric around the curves and then used the iron to flatten the remaining fabric just to ensure that everything would be as smooth and round as possible. So now flipping over the fabric and showing just the line that had been drawn around the pattern piece to show kind of like a guideline where I needed to fold it. I didn't use any pins though, presumably you could if you wanted to. I simply held it in place with my fingers and then used the iron to sharpen that crease. And because I am not someone who likes to wait for a final reveal, I put everything in place to get a good idea on how it fits and allow myself a little bit of a teaser on what it might look like when finished. And when satisfied, I then added a piece of lace behind, kind of as an embellishment to add some elegance to the stocking and decided that perhaps the Christmas tree would be the best place for some hand stitching of the contrast to the boot, uh, the, the outer fabric and the lace to the contrast. I also figured it might be rather nice to have buttons going up the length of this, so we'll see how that goes. This is how the gents boots looking. And though I don't think I'm gonna be putting any lace around the outside anytime soon, I'll probably do buttons as well. Buttons it is then. I had these in the drawer and they are going to be absolutely perfect. I love the motif on them and I think they're just going to really add a lovely level of class to the gents boots. I did search my button stash for appropriate buttons for the ladies boot but I just had nothing so I figured I would make my own. 
Here I'm using a button that was taken off of the shirt from which the contrast fabric was uh, cut and I'm cutting out a circle of paper to use as a template basically and then the idea was that once placed inside of that with the fabric wrapped around it would make a covered button out of a silk satin that would look appropriate and match and be just a little bit shiny. Once the pieces were cut out, I simply stitched around the outside with thread, uh, effectively to make something like a drawstring bag. And once that was completed in a full circle, the button was placed inside and when the string was pulled around the outside of the button it covered it. So here it is finished with the stitches, there's the button and I tightened the string just a bit because the button kept wanting to jump out so I tightened the string just a bit to secure it somewhat and then when pulled shut made a nice little cover. It's a good idea to secure the stitching or reinforce the stitching somewhat because the last thing you want is lots of frayed edges appearing from underneath of the button. Off camera and in front of the Christmas tree, I might add, I sewed on most of the buttons that I had made, but here's the process of sewing on the final one. Because the button was so fiddly and the fact that I was going through the underside, I loosely secured the thread to the contrast fabric. I don't know if there's a name for working it like this. But basically, I didn't pull the string completely tight. Um, I passed it through twice. And then with one hand holding the button and the other pulling the thread, I pulled it secure down to the contrast fabric. After doing all of the others, it just seemed like the best way to, uh, to get it to come together in a uniform way. And then I just pass the needle and thread directly underneath of the plastic button through the fabric. And in the early stages, you can just make sure that it's lying flat and centered before finishing it off completely. I do realize it was done off camera, but I did just want to show how the lace was attached to the contrast fabric. Um, I also secured the lace to the outside fabric on that same side. And then on the outside here, how the contrast fabric was tacked onto the outside fabric. And it's done.